Let's take a look at how we can start sculpting on a 3D object right away. Again, I'm in my Start menu. This time I'm going to push the Other option, which is the third one down from the bottom. That'll take me straight into my ZBrush work area with a blank canvas. Now you may or may not have your tool palette docked over here to the side, so let's quickly talk about how we can dock a palette. I'm going to go ahead and click on these double arrows right here to close this palette down. Then I'm going to go up to this main menu bar here and click on Tool. You notice when I click on that it opens up the tool palette. You'll also notice that inside the tool palette we have a little circle with a line through it. This little swatch allows us to dock palettes. So I'll go ahead and click on that swatch and you notice it'll dock my tool palette over here on the left. If you want to dock it over on the right, all you have to do is open up that shelf, grab that little circle with a swatch, and then drag it over. I'll then go ahead and click on the double arrows to close down this shelf over on the left. So now we want to add in a 3D tool to work with. So I notice I have a 3D sphere here in my tool palette. I'll click on that, and then I'm going to click and drag inside my canvas. Before I do anything else, I'm going to hit the letter T. Once I do that, I have made this 3D sphere editable. But there is one more step we need to do before we can start sculpting. You'll notice again up here at the top of the tool palette, we have an option called Make Poly Mesh 3D. I want to click on that option. We'll talk a little bit more about what a Poly Mesh 3D, what a 3D primitive, and what different objects and tools are inside ZBrush. But for right now, don't worry about that. Just make it a PolyMesh 3D. Bring your cursor over to your new PolyMesh 3D. And then click and drag. And you notice that you'll start sculpting right away. Again, as we learned earlier, if I click out in an empty area, I can rotate this and then sculpt in another position. Quick little trick is to hold down the Alt key. The Alt key will push into the surface. Now. As we move forward with other tutorials, I don't want you to think of the Alt key as just the button that pushes in on a surface. You can think of it as the button that reverses many actions inside ZBrush. So in the future, if I'm using a brush that adds highlight to a specific texture, holding down the Alt key might add a darker area. But for right now, it reverses our brush and pushes in. I can let go of Alt to again draw on the surface, pulling it out. 